Hi. The center of the experience of the Gentile Roman religion has always been the private or domestic right, and today, with the disappearance of the public right, it is even more so. This does not mean that in addition to the domestic right there is no possibility of experiencing the presence of the sacred of the Numen. However, uh, tradition has handed down to us a series of acts tested and refined through the experience carried out for thousands of years which focus our attention and our energies to contact the divine in a sort of eternal grammar. So, let's see the basic. According to tradition, the spiritual sphere understood as a paranormal world inhabited by spirits and gods is not necessarily benevolent or malevolent. However, especially if neglected and unmanaged, it can cause harm. So for the Romans, a bad harvest could ruin a farmer's life. We therefore try to propitiate the divine sphere, first of all, to neutralize the negative influences of some chaotic and harmful spirits, and also to obtain the benevolence of the divine fortresses in order to guarantee success and prosperity, not only in private life, but also within the community. The correct relationship with the divine is to find Pax Deorum, peace with the gods, a state of order, rule, harmony and discipline, which is opposed to a harmful state of anxiety due to disorder and unfocused conduct. The Pax Diorum construction and maintenance is an ongoing process. The gods do not require a constant profession of faith from us, but they do require our respect for their power and the recognition of their action in the universe. The experience of this recognition is the basis of the Roman ritual. Since the most ancient rituals proved effective in guaranteeing the success of cooperation with the gods, they are repeated and formalized without variation for the perfect development of communication between people and divinities. Two fundamental concepts need to be mentioned, pietas and cultus. So pietas indicates a scrupulous and conscientious attention to relationships with parents, relatives, ancestors, gods and institutions. A deep sense of responsibility that was mirrored by tradition first and by Roman Stoicism later. The cultus indicates the methodical execution of all the rituals and all the practice that can make the gods well disposed toward us. A pious man or woman has to exercise the cultus to maintain the Pax Deorum. The priest of the private cult is the pater familias, keeper of the sacred objects of the family and the representative of the family tradition. The sacred furnishings consisted of uh, antique family pieces, often in gold or silver, the jar for libation, the plate for bringing offerings to the hearth, the incense burner, the box for incense, the sprinkler and other elements. The sacred fire is the link between the private and public right and is located at the center of the cult showing similarities with our Indo-European peoples, in particular with the Indian tradition expressed by the collection of the Vedas and the Persian from the Avesta. The domestic fire was located in a protected area of the house and represented its heart and at the same time favored the divine presence and the support of the gods. The flame is a physical manifestation of the divine 
presence. For this reason, there is a tension in curing the fire without extinguishing it with water or with breath. At the monthly recurrences of Kalends, Ninth uh, and the Edes, flowers are offered. We remember that at the beginning of the sacred year, on the Kalends of March, the perennial fire of the Temple of Vesta was renewed. This fire was lit by rubbing two pieces of wood of different essence, while the domestic one was drawn from the sacred fire. The fuel was wood, but wood selected from holy plants was used for the sacrificial fires as well as for the fire of Vesta. Furthermore, in the sacrifices, care was taken to use the wood of the plant sacred to the divinity to which the sacrifice was addressed, for example, the oak for Jupiter, the olive tree for Minerva, the laurel for Apollo, the myrtle for Venus, etc. All the family celebration take place in front of the Lerarium. So the Lerarium is a sort of domestic temple in the shape of a niche in the wall or a cabinet where the activities of private worship are concentrated. The name derives from the Lares Familiares, spirits of the ancestors, generally depicted with two small statuettes or figures. It also represents the genius, the tutelar deity of the family, especially the head of the family, in the act of making the sacrifice, and one or two snakes also symbolizing the tutelary deity of the family, perhaps originally a manifestation of the genius Loki. The figures of the family gods, the penates, are also placed on the Lerarium. In other words, the Lerarium is a multifunctional fulcrum of domestic religiosity. Near the Lerarium there is a candle or an oil lamp symbolizing the hearth, a censer, a container for the incense, salt, a patera, the cup for offering oil, and the Lerarium should face north or east. So the ritual is divided into the following moments. First, preparation of the site and of the participants. Second, access. Third, the invocation to the genius Foki. Four, purification of the ritual area and of the participants. Five, prayer and offering to Janus. Six, prayer and offering to the genius Domi and genius Loki. Seven, prayer and, off and particularly offer of the anniversary. Eight, prayer and offering to Vesta. Nine, the piacular formula. Ten, the closure. On the preparation, we remind what was said in the previous lesson because it is a particularly important point. The law of the Twelve Tables establishes ad Deus caste ad unto, that is to approach the gods in the condition of chastity. It is necessary to wash first, and in fact outside the temples there were tubes and fountains to clean hands and feet. Fasting is not prescribed before the rite, but it is definitely better to avoid participating weighted down by food that is immediately after eating. Ideally, with regard to clothing, a candid unblemished an aged robe not used in a funeral is prescribed. However, it is essential that the clothes are clean and tidy. It is also necessary to avoid wearing objects such as chains or symbols of any kind. In particular, it is necessary to avoid wearing leather and metals. We already talked about the fire offer a little while ago, so ritual purification serves to remove impurities from the area. What are impurities? Well, we can give many interpretations, modern and ancient, uh, we can think of 
of it as a way to ward off negative thoughts, to feel secluded from everyday noise, to create a defensive barrier between the intimacy of the sacred moment and the buzz of modern life. Or we may give also theological explanations such as the removal of unwanted chaotic entities that could distract us from the correct execution of the right and the perception of the divine. Frankincense and water with salt are used for purification. In the event that the ritual room has not been used for a long time or is used for other usage, we suggest sulfur for purification. Janus is the first god to be celebrated for his central position in the Roman conception. In the verses generally in the Carmen Saliare, he is called in archaic Latin Duanus Cerus, that is the good creator and superior to the other gods, father of the gods, god of the gods. For this, Numa dedicated the first month of the year to him. Janus, in his central position in the cosmic topology, is the immobile polar axis around which everything moves, and also the door through which one can access. A door for special events in life, as a rite of passage, but also the portal through which one enters the sacred sphere and finds access to the other gods. For this reason, the ritual opens with Janus. From the highest divinity, we pass to the totally deities directly linked to the place where the ritual is celebrated, the Genius Domi and or the Genius Loki. This is done, first of all, to ask for protection locally from those lower divinities who accompany us in the daily life, but also for another reason. Pay attention to the logic. The uh, extreme points of communication are being defined. On the one hand, Janus, the nucleus of the divine, by whom one enters, so to speak, the pantheon. On the other, the place where we are, the here and now, and a secure connection is established between these two extremities, a kind of sacred channel. The ritual ends with Vesta to his return into the fire to which we turn daily to nourish ourselves. Vesta brings us back to everyday life and prepares, so to speak, the closing of the ritual portal, giving stability to the walls of the house and continuity to the family action, consolidating the divine vibration as a protective aura in defense of the domestic walls. We remind that the Payacular formula, as already explained in the previous lesson, is recited in a prudential way to cleanse the ritual from any error before its closure. The traditional Roman movement has a set of rites uh, with parts taken from the sources and parts that, after decades of practice, can now be considered in our tradition. The rituals are carried out with Latin and Italian formulas. The site of the traditional Roman movement, Saturniatellus, offers interesting articles on the whole sphere uh, concerning the Gentile Roman religion, so if you don't know it, I invite you to take a peek uh, in our online magazine. There is a translator that works quite well. So, thank you for watching.